Welcome in the name of Christ from here at St. Paul's United Church in Golden Valley. If you haven't tuned in before, I'm the Reverend Fraser Williamson and I'm the minister here at St. Paul's and also at St. Andrew's United in Port Loring. Behind the camera today is Lori Holotuck and of course Christopher Moore, our ma marvelous musician is here and he will lead us in music, but we do have a special edition today, so watch out for that. Even though we're not physically together, all of you watching are part of the body of Christ and part of this faithful congregation or congregations. Whether you attend one of our churches or another church, or even if you don't belong to any church at all, wherever you are, take a moment and let the Holy Spirit Wash over your soul. Let it connect you through time and space to all the members of the body of Christ found here and now. And now we will take a moment and light our Christ candle. We light our Christ candle today as a symbol of God's universal love shown to all in the light and life of Jesus Christ. And now I invite you to say with me responsibly the call to worship. Like doors open wide, welcoming all who worship together. God's hands are outstretched, extending mercy to all. Like many grains brought together in one loaf, God's love binds us as one, making us living grace for all. Like a persistent mother refusing to be dismissed or denied, God's voice cries out, calling us to justice and right relationship with all. Like a party for the outcast, the foreigner and the stranger, God's heart gathers us into joyful community of prayer for all. Let us worship God whose love is for all. And now, let us take some time for prayer. Let us pray together the opening prayer printed in the bulletin. Merciful God, your grace is bigger than we can imagine, wider than we can dream. In a world where racism, hatred, bigotry, and fear diminish your image in others, you remind us there are no exclusions from your family no barriers to your open arms. Your expansive welcome reminds us never to keep others from life-changing love or deny them your life-giving bread. Amen. And now for our first hymn, and it's an old favorite, Come, O Fount of Every Blessing. And if you have a hymn book, it's in 559 in Voices United, but we do have special, uh, a special uh, song sheet that's been mailed to you, um, and we're doing three verses of it, and it's Come, O Fount of Every Blessing. <laughs> Thank you. 
God declares, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. Confidence in our deliverance, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray together the prayer of confession. Holy God, we confess we have not been obedient to your will for us. We have sought justice for ourselves, but neglected justice for others. We have insisted on our own rights, but have not lived rightly in our relationships. We have desired mercy for our sins, but we have not offered mercy to those who have sinned against us. By the power of your Holy Spirit, free us from the prison of our disobedience. Help us to love as you have loved us, that our lives may testify to your abounding grace. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Friends, the gift and the calling of God are irrevocable. Receive the gift of forgiveness and share that gift with others. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And now let us pray together the prayer for illumination. Life-giving God, open our hearts and minds that we will receive and then act on your message of love hope and grace in your living word, Jesus. Amen. Today, we have again Cindy Willamy from Sundridge reading our scripture today from the letter to the Romans. So here is Cindy. A reading from Romans 11, 1-2a, 29-32. I ask, then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant from Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are really revocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. Normally, in the pre-COVID world, here at St. Andrews and St. Paul's, there would be a young at heart time. Sometimes I would place an item in a bag and have someone in the congregation stick their hand in and pull out an item that would be connected to the theme of the sermon. Well, I have my bag here. But because of social distancing, I will take the item out myself. And I think I'll try it on too. I then would ask those gathered what the item is, and I would explain it's a connection to scripture. As you can see, it is a mask inside the bag, and in the last few months, this has been an item of division. In the last few months, I have seen on Facebook, and seen on the news, and in conversation, division over this little item. It is the law in this area to wear these in indoor spaces, like grocery stores, restaurants, and the post office. So not wearing one is disobedient, but I will note when you're doing a church service, you are allowed, because of social distancing, everybody's far from me, you're not, you're, I am permitted not to wear a mask. But the source of most division comes from those who do wear masks. I've heard and seen anger towards those who do not wear masks from those who do. Many who wear masks 
in pointing out those that don't, are boasting that they are better than those who do not. If I were to go back in time to the letter that was written to the Romans, there would be a different item of contention that would be in this bag. And I actually did put that item in the bag. This is the item that caused division then. Yes, this item is a cross, which is the symbol of Jesus' act on, of sacrifice on the cross. Like the masks, the people of the early church were boasting that they had found the way. They were boasting that they had found faith in God, who raised Jesus from the dead on that first Easter morning. The letter to the Romans was addressed to the believers who were part of the early church in Rome. And Rome, being farther away from Jerusalem and Israel, was primarily Gentile. Most of the believers were Gentile as opposed to being Jewish. There is hardly a Jewish population in Rome because the Jews were actually banned from Rome just before this time. During this ban, the amount of Gentile believers increased considerably. Now the issue of contention was faith in Jesus Christ. And commentators state that under 20% of Jews believed and followed Christ. Knowing that many Jews were unbelievers, many Gentiles in Rome began to think that since many of the Jews rejected Jesus, God would reject them. Many of the Gentile Christians were boasting that God favored them over those who did not believe. Many thought that they were better than Jews who did not believe in Jesus. But in the text that was not covered in today's reading, because we jumped from verses 1 to 2a all the way to 29, the writer states several examples in the history of the Jewish people that God was merciful even after people had lost faith and had done bad things and went away from God. The writer also states that some hearts are hardened so that the glory of God may be revealed. Think of this, if the Jewish authorities did not reject Jesus, there would have never been his death and there would have never been the resurrection. Throughout the history of the Jewish faith, there have been instances where the people have been disobedient and went away from God. There were the times when the people were in the wilderness and they thought they were going to die, so they lost faith in God. There was a time that they went against God when they created the golden calf. There have been times where many of the people, even the kings, have gone against God. Many of these kings even committed murder. But God did not abandon them, nor did God abandon the people. Even though the people rejected God and did some horrible things, God did not reject them. One of the greatest examples of God's grace for those who lost belief and went away from God and done bad things is the narrative in the prodigal son found in Luke 15. There the son was in, given his inheritance ahead of time and he wasted it away. When he realized he was going to die of hunger, he decided to go back to his father and he thought he would have to work as a slave to his father. But when he returned, he was welcomed with open arms and the father ordered the best fatted calf to be killed and a great feast was held in his honor. Now when this happened, the other son pointed out the disobedience of the prodigal son 
saying that he followed the rules and stayed and that he was angry that the father held this celebration. The father still showed love to the son who had left and God shows love to those who are disobedient. Another instance where God's grace was shown was in Joseph. His brother sold him into slavery and he became a great leader in Egypt. When his brothers came to get food, he at first did not reveal himself. But when he did, Joseph showed grace and love for his brothers as their disobedience led to all of their salvation. The writer of Romans urges the Gentiles not to boast about being better because they believe. The writer states to them in verse 30 that just as you were disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. In this, the writer says that even though they are obedient now, they were not in the past and God will show mercy. In the scripture, the writer says not everyone is perfect and there are times in which everyone is disobedient. The conclusion of the scripture selection is that God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. In the debate and division about masks, this concluding statement is true. All at one point in time or another have been disobedient to God. All have been disobedient to laws. We are not perfect and God forgives us. Every week we pray the Lord's Prayer where it says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. God does not save us because we do good things and God does not reject those who are disobedient. God is merciful to all. All meaning not just Christians, but God the creator of all is merciful to all. God was merciful to the people of Israel and God was merciful to the Gentiles. God is also merciful to other faiths as well. God is merciful to the Muslims as they are descendants of Abraham who were given the promise and blessing of God through him. Other faiths have a different name for God, but God in those faiths shows mercy and love and provides a way for those other faiths to reconcile with God when they are disobedient. In our Christian faith, we receive our mercy from God who sent Jesus to the world to die for our disobedience. It does not matter how big or how little our disobedience is. It does not matter whether we are obedient now or what we do now or in the future. All of us are disobedient. We are given grace by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Having received this grace, we are called to show mercy and grace to others who are disobedient. We are called to share that we have been saved by God's grace and that this grace is offered to all. Thanks be to God. Amen. I guess we need to come through here. And now speaking of the grace of God, we are going to sing our next hymn, another old one. A Mighty Fortress is Our God, and it's found in 262 of Voices United, if you've got a hymn book at home, or it is on the song sheet right here. We're going to sing all verses of A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Although the offering plate cannot be passed during this online worship, there are many ways to still give offerings to your church. If you're not on par, which is pre-authorized remittance already, you can sign up or you can drop off or mail a check to your church. And some churches even have e-transfer, which may be another option. Please contact your church's treasurer and for our three treasurers, I know them really well, and they'll be happy to get your money. With any, and they will answer any questions or they will discuss with you the options for giving. Your gifts help with the ongoing expenses of the church as well as continuing to support mission projects both at the local level and beyond through the work of the United Church's Mission and Service Fund. Thank you for your faithful giving, especially during this time when we're doing church a little differently. And while all financial gifts that help fund the work of the church are appreciated, we also remember that there are many other gifts that also support the mission and work of the church. So at this time, let us virtually place all our gifts into the offering plate and lift it to God in thanksgiving for all that gives, uh, gives us. your goodness we offer these gifts and the giftness of this community to the service of human kindness within the communities that we live our country and the world through our local church and the mission and service of the United Church of Canada Amen. and now it's time for mission and work of the church or I think it's Zion they just call it the announcements and the first one is Iced Coffee Hour at Jake's is happening again this Monday at 3 o'clock. If you're interested in coming, please let me know so I can reserve enough tables. And we're going to do coffee again. The St. Paul's Ladies Coffee Hour will be at Tuesday, 10 a.m. through Zoom. And please contact me to get the link. The regulars, I do send a link to them every morning. I would have sent it earlier at night time, but they like it in the morning so they get the reminder. And I would like to thank all those who are watching our services on YouTube. I invite you to click on that subscribe button for those, and for those who've already subscribed, thank you very much. Now next Sunday, August 23rd, there's something new we're going to try. The church always changes. It's always adapting. And for that service, which was originally to be taped at Zion in Sundridge, we will be having an outdoor service at 10 a.m. in the back at Zion. So you've got the church on one side and you've got the lake behind you. Very nice. And we will be live streaming the service there. And if you do attend the service, please bring your own lawn chair and we will be wearing masks. And if you'd like to catch it on live stream, I will send the link to the live stream on Saturday night. So if you'd like that link, let me know at RevFraserWilliamson at gmail.com. And if it ends up raining or it's going to rain on that Sunday, we will still have a service for you. If there's rain on the 23rd, there will be another pre-recorded service and we will provide the link for that service on Saturday night. And just a note, when we do the live stream, the service will be available to view any time after the live stream on the YouTube channel. So if you can't make it at 10 a.m., but you want to see it 8 o'clock at night, you can do that. And at this moment, I would like to thank Christopher for playing the music, 
Lori for working the camera, and Cindy Willamy for reading scripture, and Iran Holotuck for the Men of Mission. And speaking of Ron, here he is with this week's Men of Mission. The Minute for Mission for today is entitled LGBTQIA and Two-Spirit Youth. Our gifts for mission and service support partners around the world for being LGBTQIA or Two-Spirit is punishable by death or in prison. Here's a story about one of those partners. In Jamaica, the Larry Chang Center provides housing to young adults who would otherwise be homeless. The youth shelter provides a safe space and supports mental and physical health and well-being. It also provides access to education and skills training and helps the young people get essential documentation and ID. Outreach to youth at risk is critical as well as working to increase sensitivity among pro providers of related health and educational services. Church support for the shelter has had a positive impact on the developing ecumenical and public conversation on the importance of dignity, rights, and inclusion. Your gifts to mission and service have made a real contribution in the global work of LGBTQIA and Two-Spirit rights and care for individuals facing oppression, discrimination, and risk because of their sex sexual orientation. If mission and service giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you so much. If you've not given, please join me in making mission and service giving a regular part of your life of faith. Loving your neighbor is at the heart of our mission and service. Thank you. And now let us pray. God of all, we give you thanks for your unconditional love. We give you thanks that you do not reject us when at times we have rejected you. We give you thanks for all the promises you have made to us since the beginning. We give you thanks for the prophets and those called to lead the ones that you love. We give you thanks for your greatest gift of love, your son Jesus, whom you sent to die on the cross so that we may live. When looking at our lives today, we pray that you enlighten us to your love and grace. We pray that this love be shared with all, regardless of race, gender, sexual orientation, and political affiliation. We continue to pray for our siblings in Lebanon as they continue to grieve and clean up after the explosion. We continue, and we pray for our world leaders that they continue to work together to benefit all of your creation. We pray for all those who are still feeling isolated in this pandemic. May your light and love shine on them. We pray for all those who are working to keep our country safe and secure during this unprecedented time. And now we pray silently those persons and concerns that we wish to declare to you. We gather all these prayers into one as we pray the prayer your Son, the Savior, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as I said earlier, we had a special addition to our service. So today we have a debut performance from Golden Valley's newest resident, Mavis Mahotu, who lives on a Jersey road. And she's singing All Fly Away, which by coincidence was actually a hymn that was sung at Don Adrizi's funeral. So here is Mavis with her wonderful voice. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, bye and bye, I'll fly away. When the shadows of this life are gone, I'll fly away. Like a board from prison bars is thrown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, bye and bye, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then, I'll to a land where joy shall never end, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, bye and bye, I'll fly away. Everybody. we will all fly away so and I'm so glad that all of us sang on the last little bit of that and I want to thank Mavis for sharing her wonderful voice and even though we have boasted our greatness we are all disobedient but we are all granted grace through the love shown in Jesus Christ who died on the cross and was raised to life we are called to share this news of grace and forgiveness to all that we meet. And when you go sharing this news, may God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God grant you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.